Hello everyone and welcome to this session of Aussie Live with Joe Freitag. Today's session title is called Personas, Profiles and Portraits of Giftedness. I'm a great fan of Joe. She um, is passionate about gifted children and is often presented on this topic for Tech Talk Tuesday. So Joe, it'll be wonderful to hear from you again today and I'll let you take over once we've gone through this first slide. First of all, we'd like to thank our sponsors and supporters, the Australia E-Series, the Learning Revolution and Blackboard Collaborate. We'd just like to take a minute for you to actually use your mouse to click on one of the little emoticons in the bottom left-hand corner and then simply drag it across to the map of the world where you are from. So all you've got to do is bring your mouse to the whiteboard Click on one of the smiley faces or world icons and drag it across to wherever you're from. So we're really pleased to have Lisa with us from the USA. Uh, Lisa, I might just mention Joe is the moderator of GT Chat, which is gifted and talented uh, chat for people. So Joe might share that with you later as you might be interested in joining that. Okay, Joe, without further ado, uh, please tell us more about personas, profiles and portraits. Thank you very much indeed, um, Anne. Um, can you all hear me please? Can I just have a smiley face if you can hear? Great, thank you, Danielle. Um, okay. Um, we'd like to Roll back to this slide, yes, and we can see where you've come from. And so now we're going to forward a bit further and we will um, ask you who's here. We've seen where, you, where you're from. Um, now, who's here? Um, who of you are teachers? Who of you are techie people? Who of you are parents? Um, and who of you have wandered in here and you're not quite sure what this is about? Um, who have come because you have a, an interest in, in gifted? If you're very welcome to write on the whiteboard using um, the tools, uh, which you see there beside the whiteboard. Um, Oh, Ness has put Aussie Holic, yes. <laughs> Grandmother of gifted kids, great. Parent of two gifted young adults, Aussie Holic, graduate teacher, teacher of ICT from Victoria, Australia, and teaching a small rural school called Hawksdale, that's Anne. Uh, Mel's a teacher, Ness is a teacher, Sarah's a teacher. Christy's a teacher and Danielle's a teacher. Lovely, great, thank you. And hi Ben. Um, yeah, it's wonderful having grandchildren there. Um, yeah, okay. We'll move on to the next slide. Um, we're just about to celebrate for the first time Gifted Awareness Week in Australia. Um, New Zealand has been doing it for a few years now, um, but this is the first time Australia will have done it. Um, and it's mostly being organised by the AAEGT, that's the Australian Association for the Education of Gifted and Talented. Um, and there's a link there where you can go and see all the events that will be held during this time. Um, the smaller link is a live one, so you can click on that and go straight from there. The other one's just a bit bigger so that you can read it. Um, also, if you save all the whiteboard slides, um, all the links that I are going to I'm going to give you will be on the last couple of slides. Um, so, so what do I want 
what messages do I hope will come out most during this Gifted Awareness Week? Well, there are many, many myths about gifted students, um, but the message that I hope comes out most clearly is that all students deserve an excellent education and gifted students need an appropriate education. It needs to be appropriate in the level and the pace and the depth and the breadth of the teaching they're receiving. Uh, and thank you for putting the link into the chat, that's great. Um, <laughs> there seems to be quite a, a general climate of we'll teach everybody the same thing um, and the feeling that giving gifted students something different is not an appropriate thing to do but PASO has three questions that help you decide whether the curriculum opportunities are appropriate for gifted students. Would all students want to be involved in such learning experiences? Could all students participate in such learning experiences? And should all students be expected to succeed in such learning experiences? And the answer to that is if the answer to that is uh, yes, well, probably it isn't really specifically gifted education. Uh, if, if it's something that should be good for every student, and quite a lo number of the programs begin life as something for the gifted, and then they realise that, no, that's just actually good teaching methods and all students would benefit from that. But the important thing is to be at the right level, to start at the right level, to proceed at the right pace and to go to the necessary depth and breadth of the subject with gifted students. And that could be quite variable um, with with what the, the rest of the class could be doing. This is why individual education programs are very helpful um, for gifted students. And um, we're going to be talking a bit later about underachievement and various possible causes of it. This little character here is Columbus Cheetah, uh, who I see Lisa has given us a <laughs> a lovely little heart for. Um, the uh, Columbus Cheetah is based on the article Is It a Cheetah by Stephanie Tolan. There's a link for that um, at the end of the presentation. And uh, Columbus Cheetah is the myth buster. There's a whole page there of 10 different myths surrounding gifted students. Um, and one of them is that Everybody is gifted, and one is that nobody is gifted, and of course, neither of those are true. And but what we do want is for all our students um, to be realizing their potential, to be moving from the natural aptitude the innate giftedness they have through to fully developed talent. Um, and so this is Professor Francoise Garnier's model um, and he talks about the environment that the students are in and he talks about their intrapersonal traits and um, the effect of their developmental process and a number of chance type catalysts. This is the sort of people they meet with, the um, opportunities they're offered, and um, 
all these things will either help them or hinder them in getting across that gap there from the potential they're born with to the fully developed talent. But each of them, each of the students have different stories. Um, and Dr. Betts and Dr. Nyhart have uh, a profiles of the gifted and talented where they list six different types of profiles of gifted and talented students. Um, you'll possibly notice that these are applicable to students in general as well to some degree, but they were talking specifically about gifted when they wrote this. Um, and the other thing that has been interesting me just recently is persona dolls. And they've got a link there to persona doll training in the UK. Persona dolls are usually used with younger students to help them learn empathy and relationship and, and knowledge about people from different groups, different cultural groups, ethnic groups, different religious groups. Um, they have a doll who maybe comes in to visit them once a week and sits on the teacher's lap, whispers in her ear and the, the students can all ask questions or they can make comments and the doll answers them. The doll has her own story and it has to be, all the staff have to be consistent about the story. So she has a book and she has a, a student log, the same as any regular student. Um, so that if the, in, if the issue that they're going to be talking about, for instance, is that there's a new baby expected in the family, um, that all the staff will know that that's the case and they won't be telling different stories about the doll. Uh, but I'm using them slightly differently. And it all came about because um, a lady got in touch with me who was a student teacher who had an assignment. Each of the people in the class had to make a persona doll about a specific um, either cultural group or an educational issue. Um, and she had chosen giftedness. So her supervisor put her in touch with me to get information about giftedness. She asked me a huge number of questions, very specific questions about day-to-day -day life and how, um, it, well, how the giftedness affected that. Um, it was very, very specific indeed. So I got in touch with the supervisor and I said, well, Gifted can actually come from any racial group, any religious group, any ethnic group. Um, so I'm not sure how to answer some of these questions. She said, don't worry about that. You just give her the information about the giftedness and um, let her decide on the rest of the background for the doll. <laughs> and then she also said, I want to have a a child's voice as well. So can you please um, ask the same questions to your youngest child? And I said, well, my youngest child is in his late 20s by now, so you won't hear a child's voice from him. But um, I do have a little cartoon character who has a blog of her own called Sprite Sight. And she's a twice exceptional student. She's exceptionally gifted, but she has an unspecified learning difficulty um, and you could have a child's voice from her. So having, um, having done this and filled out all the, the questions for her, I thought I would really like to make a Sprite doll for myself. And that began quite an adventure. It began with finding the doll that's in number three along. Um, in the opportunity shop um, and she cost less than a pattern for making a doll um, and I thought well I can 
um, turn her into Sprite. But when I got her home, she was just too beautiful to dismantle and turn into something else. So I kept her and started to make a model of Sprite. And then, oh, one thing led to another and um, and I was given a, a frame for a doll and I turned it into the one on the end there, who's Edward. Um, and I jokingly said to Dr. Edith Johnson, um, I might make the whole set of Bets and I Hearts profiles of the gifted. And she said, go for it. <laughs> Sounds a good idea. And so I did. And it's been a big adventure and now we have another blog specifically for these Persona dolls. Um, but each one of them has their own story and is quite helpful in the way we think about gifted students and about how to help them be successful. Now the first one in the, in the set is Miranda. Miranda the successful and this is the student that um, teachers would nominate as being the gifted one in their class. If you ask the teacher to name the gifted students, the first one that comes to their mind is Miranda. She's a high achiever and a teacher pleaser. Her work's always beautifully presented and she'll put in the effort required to gain the best possible marks because she's extrinsically motivated and she's eager for approval. Academic studies have been very easy for Miranda up till now. She's accustomed to being able to get good marks easily. This can be a bit of a problem later on when the work gets harder. She may not have really learned how to dig in and, and learn because it's been very easy. In fact, Miranda is a perfectionist and she's very self-critical. She's reluctant to go beyond the set syllabus and she avoids taking any risks and she often becomes anxious. So what does Miranda need? Would you like to um, put some suggestions into the text maybe? Miranda needs to be challenged. She needs to take risks. Yes, exactly, more challenging work. Yes, definitely with academically appropriate peers. And the, the academically appropriate peers may not be her age peers. They may be from a few forms further up. Um, she needs to take risks. She needs to move out of her comfort zone. She needs to be taught independent learning skills and develop, to develop resilience. She could also be uh, benefiting from being encouraged to show more creativity and originality and independence. Really feel age is irrelevant with giftedness. Definitely, Ben. Amen. <laughs> it's ability and social skills. Yep, yeah, that's right. Um, she needs subject or grade acceleration and she needs time with true intellectual peers. Time with mentors would also be valuable and she needs information and support in relation to the social emotional aspects of giftedness because there's a high chance that she's um, very much, um, well, influenced by uh, Dubrovsky's overexcitabilities um, is probably very sensitive um, and she needs to know and understand herself. Uh, yes, Ben's got a really good thing here, plus fine motor skills gifted six year olds get very frustrated with not being able to do things big kids do, oh yes, definitely needs interaction with other gifted children. Yes, Danielle, I agree. Um, and one of the reasons is that she needs to see that there are others 
like her. <laughs> yes, cue tantrum sometimes, yep. <laughs> um, yes, so that's that's Miranda. Miranda the successful. Alongside her we have Michaela the creative one. Now Michaela is very bright, she's creative, but she's moody and she's a bit of a nonconformist. She likes arts and crafts and music and dance and drama. Um, and at times she appears to be confident and bubbling and extroverted, but at other times she seems quite defensive. She loves all the sparkles and frills and she dances and cut reels her way um, around rather than walking sedately. And some of the teachers wonder whether she has ADHD. Um, and she may or may not. Um, um, you know, it may be just that she's very active, very active both mentally and physically. Um, and her responses to assignments are usually very different from the expected responses. They reflect her creativity and her unusual approach to the subject and often also express her strong opinions and her deep inner convictions because that's the other thing. She probably is very concerned about the environment, very concerned about the fairness of things, um, very concerned about how things are in the world. Um, some of the teachers consider her to be rebellious and have discipline problems and they can find themselves in a power struggle with her. So what do we think that um, Michaela might need? Would you like to put some of that in the, into the text box? Hello Anthony. Yes, project based passion, project learning based on her passions, yes. An opportunity to be creative. She needs parents and teachers and mentors who will recognise her and encourage her areas of talent and focus on her creative potential rather than achievement because what she does may be rather off at a tangent. Um, it may not be exactly what the teacher was requesting and it may not therefore score high marks. Um, so um, if we focus on her creative potential rather than her achievement, and while there needs to be tolerance of her individualism, she does need instruction in interpersonal skills and she probably needs help with organisational issues because my Michaela, I don't know whether this is true of all the creative ones, but um, in my Michaela's story, she's also rather organisationally challenged. Um, this is actually not in... Uh, the Betts and Nyhart profile, but I think of her as a, a visual spatial learner. Um, yes, I can see why teachers need to understand gifted students. Yes, Janita, that's, that's it exactly. And they need to have more, um, yes, creative ways to do academics. They need to have more pre-service training about giftedness um, and more ongoing training um, and I, I think of Michaela as being a visual spatial learner, um, very good with where she is in space for dancing and gymnastics and um, things like this. Um, I think re-dancing she probably would prefer um, fairly free form dance rather than um, 
a very prescriptive ballet type dance. Um, and um, most of all, her feelings need to be respected and her original thinking needs to be encouraged. Um, because so often you get the children who are drawing wonderful things before they go off to school and then they realise that um, nobody else is doing it like them and, um, and they can get squashed down into a box and everybody loses. Agonising for a child to get a low mark for overdoing it. Yes, exactly. Um, really just forces pedagogy to be better. Yes, being exposed to gifted means that your teaching practice is forced to improve for all kids. Yes, exactly. That's, that's right. Open-ended project. Yes, that, that's great for Michaela. So moving on to Felicity. Felicity is the underground gifted. Felicity is the one who just doesn't want to be noticed. She's just hiding away there in the class. The teachers think of her as a compliant, shy, quiet, average student. Um, and they may see occasional faces of brilliance which are then quickly hidden away again. But the truth is that Felicity does all she can to blend in with the other students and not do anything which will draw attention to herself. The main reason is that no girl that she knows from her background has ever been a success at school and they appear not to the people that she's um, in, in her background appear not to value education. In fact, the people in her home have a very different style of wisdom and different perspectives on many things from the ones she's learning at school. So this can be a matter of um, cultural difference. Um, we were hearing a very good um, description of this earlier in one of the earlier sessions. Um, from the speaker who was in Alberta, Canada, and she was talking about different wisdom in the different groups. Um, so Felicity is quite often absent from school because her home group um, ob are observing um, important occasions, which may even involve nomadic journeys. Um, and so she's not there very often. Um, Felicity's conflicted. She'd like to do well and she thinks that she could do well, but she doesn't want to lo risk losing her friendships or face teasing and bullying. She would hate to do anything that could be seen as a betrayal of her ideals, of the ideals of the people that she loves. Uh, so what do we think Felicity needs? Yes, challenge stereotypes. Yes, exposed to examples of successful women, etc. Yes. Mentoring, yes. Adults who are trained in giftedness, yes, and lesson focusing on positive, positives or differences, and a mentor from a similar cultural background, yes, yes, that would be excellent, Mel. Um, she needs a welcoming learning environment, and she needs to be put in touch with true intellectual peers and role models who've crossed the cultural expectation boundaries. She needs support for her abilities and to learn self-understanding and acceptance. She needs help with career planning. She needs open discussions about societies, class differences, racism, sexism, and what could be the possible costs to her of success.
And then we have Vincent, Vince, the at risk. <laughs> and Vincent is in the at risk group because he often plays truant. He's become involved with a gang of thrill seeking graffiti artists. And there's a real danger that associating with this group could lead to taking alcohol or other drugs. Some teachers actually feel a bit relieved when he isn't there um, because he can be very disruptive in class and they can be a bit afraid of him. And some of the other students are afraid of Vince too. Uh, he does have a few friends and the ones who are his friends he's fiercely loyal to. Um, he always seems to be angry. But it's also clear that he's suffering from depression because beneath all the bluster, Vince is very sensitive. What he doesn't want anyone to know is that he loves reading Shakespeare's sonnets and that when he's absent from school, he often pursues his own interests in libraries and museums and art galleries when he's not busy graffitiing on something. And there he is, <laughs> sitting there with his, with his um, Shakespeare's sonnets. And the little dog who's with him um, is, represents um, the Dabrowski dog, Sensual. Um, now, the Dabrowski dogs all represent um, Dabrowski's overexcitabilities and they're characters from my Sprite site blog. And, um, Sensual is the one who um, is very aware of sights and sounds and smells. Um, he's got the nickname Itchy because quite often he um, has allergies or um, um, yeah, just um, reacts strongly to these things. Thank you. I'm seeing Amrita's saying I'm learning a lot from these examples. Thanks. Thank you, Amrita. Um, I've, I've um, shared this with a number of people, um, psychologists and teachers and um, you know family members, etc. And people do say that it's helpful because it is a metaphor and it's a story and it, it um, gives a very um, personalised view. So, um, so with, with Vince, much of what the class is doing seems to him to be banal and basic and puerile. And he's not motivated by the rewards being offered by the teachers uh, because he goes with intrinsic motivation. Um, and because he's so, so often absent, he hardly ever completes any assignments and his academic achievement is very low. Um, but it's important that we don't lower the expectations of him. Uh, we need to arrange for testing to gauge the actual level of his abilities. Um, and so what would we what we think what do we think would be helpful for Vince? Um, when I talked to the psychologist lady, um, Jeanette Phelan from Uplift in Brisbane, she said, oh yes, graffiti artist, she said, we have a, a whole social program for graffiti artists, um, giving them a place where it's acceptable for them to practice their art, but also combined with counselling and social services. Um, and she she related to Vince very strongly. She said, "Oh yes," she said, "Yes, he would be very sensitive." <laughs> Open dialogue between home and school to provide consistency. Talk to him. Set short-term achievable goals to feel success and build confidence. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Find interest and incorporate learning projects. Yes. Yes, well, um, 
Fintz really needs an individualised learning plan. We need to see what he's missed out on. There are probably quite a lot of gaps because he hasn't been there quite a lot of the time. But in other ways, he's probably a long way ahead. Um, the thing that springs to mind is the film Goodwill Hunting. Vince is very like Will Hunting. Um, there may be problems in Vince's family home life, which could be helped with counselling. His family should endeavour to keep the communications open and communicate confidence in him and a desire to work together with him to overcome obstacles. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. That looks great. Um, and Vincent needs an alternative environment with safety and structure. He needs professional counselling, direction for short-term goals and help to develop long-term goals and a career path. And he needs a strong mentor or advocate to challenge and encourage him and to hold him accountable for his, ac for his actions. So that's our Vince. And then we have Edward, the autonomous learner. Uh, we were hearing quite a bit about autonomy in one of the earlier, section, uh, earlier sessions too. Um, and this is um, the one that Dr George Betts would consider really is a successful one. Although um, Miranda was called the successful one, she really was still quite dependent on her teachers. Um, Edward is completely autonomous, um, but that doesn't necessarily make him easy to teach. Um, Dr. George Betts has the autonomous learner model, um, and he would consider that Edward is really um, the most successful. Um, Edward's a prime example of the autonomous learner profile. People call him the little professor. He dresses in a rather old fashioned manner. He plays the recorder and several other instruments. He reads voraciously and he loves classical literature. Although quiet and peace loving, he's very interested in knights and Arthurian legend and life in medieval times. And that's a bound copy of Ivanhoe that he has there. Um, but he also loves all the sciences, especially botany and biology, and he can often be seen examining plants and insects with a magnifying glass. He reads algebra and calculus books for fun, um, and uh, he's teaching himself several languages with the help of language programs on audio and videotapes. And now that he's got onto the internet, well, <laughs> he's very much into um, listening to lectures and um, attending online conferences and things. He's he's very happy. Um, the Dubrovsky dog that would be sitting along next to um, Edward would be intellectual, the Border Collie. Um, Edward is um, happy in his own skin and he pursues his own learning at his own rate in his own distinct manner. Um, so, what do we think Edward needs? Well, Edward, um, Edward needs the opportunity to, to work at his own rate and in his own pace, at his own time. Um, it doesn't make him an easy student to teach because um, he can be on a completely different um, time scale than everybody else. Yeah, this little fellow would benefit from learning connection with others. Yeah, good development. 
natural world in university or business. Yes, yes, yes. Extracurricular involvement, involvement. Yes, yes. Like sports. Yes. Um, clubs and groups and things. Um, okay, so that's that's Edward, and he would be considered by Betts to being as being the most successful because that's what we're trying to encourage for good autonomous lifelong learning um, but not all of these gifted students that we've seen are successful there are a number of reasons they can be underachieving um, with all students there are a number of reasons that they could be underachieving there could be learning difficulties um, the gifted ones could have gifts and talents that are not recognised and they're not being challenged academically and therefore they're unmotivated. But there are other things like health or um, coming from poverty or um, isolation, their home environment, um, the language and cultural and ethnic issues and they could be lacking support. Um, so there are a number of reasons that they could be underachieving um, and that brings us to my particular favourite one which is Sprite the Twice Exceptional. Um, Sprite is exceptionally gifted but she has some sort of learning difficulty or difference which I haven't specified. Uh, would a gifted child not realise they're gifted? Some do, some don't, Junita. Um, <laughs> my five-year-old was reading um, an adult academic journal over my shoulder about whether you should tell a child they're gifted and he said, so am I gifted? <laughs> um, Usually they know they're different. They don't always know why it is. Um, so really there's a big debate about whether you should tell them or not. And I, th I come down on the side of yes, you need to tell them because they know they're different and they'll assume all the wrong things if they're not Yes, they need to be told they're gifted to avoid internal discrepancies because they're, they're simultaneously several ages. They're emotionally one age and um, academically another age and, and neither of those are the same as their chronological age. Um, they know they don't fit in. Um, I also, in the characters on Sprite site blog, have the black dogs who are causes of depression um, and one of them is called thinks he's an alien black dog and <laughs> thinks he's an alien black dog just feels like he's just been dumped there from another planet um, and just feels so different from everybody else. Um, so our sprite um, she's exceptionally gifted but she has some sort of learning difficulty or difference which I haven't specified um, which can make it for hard for her to demonstrate her giftedness uh, and it makes her studies exhausting. She has a great thirst for knowledge and she gathers so much just by osmosis and intuition and she loves doing the research but then she hates to write the essay about it. Um, she exhibits all the characteristics of gifted learning disabled students observed by Dr Linda Silverman and there's a link to that at the end of the um, presentation and all Dabrowski's overexcitabilities and there's a link to that also there. So the thing is with this Venn diagram here we have the whole student population, some of them are gifted, some of them are underachieving, some of them have a learning difficulty and then there's areas of overlap gifted with a learning difficulty 
gifted who are underachieving for whatever reason. You know, that could have been any of those other things, but it, it could be that it's a learning difficulty. They could come into that white section in the middle there, which is gifted with a learning difficulty who are underachieving. Um, and it's the job of the teachers and the parents and the um, psychologists and service providers to try and build a fence here to stop them falling into this underachieving area. So so the, the reason that, um, that Sprite, is depicted, Sprite is always depicted as having an injured left ankle so that she has to wear different shoes on each feet, each foot, which represents the fact that um, she needs different provisions for her giftedness and for her learning disability. So teachers may not realise that Sprite is gifted um, if they only notice and try to remed remediate the difficulties. That's this right side picture though. You know, she's got very ordinary sort of shoe on that foot but they've gone whole hog and fixed up the difficulties, you see. Um, sometimes she's able to conceal her problems um, because the the giftedness can mask the problems and the problems can lessen the appearance of the giftedness so that she appears to be just an average student. So here in the middle she's got her long boots on hiding the problems. Um, and sometimes her giftedness is noticed and addressed. So she's got her sparkly blue formal gifted program shoe on. Um, uh, but nothing is done for the disabilities and that can lead to problems in how she's able to cope with her um, gifted program if the learning difficulties are not being addressed at the same time. So Sprite needs educational provisions for both her giftedness and her disability simultaneously. So here we've got a variety of different things. With um, I have a program that um, is I call Feet Speak 2E Shoes and it's based on um, the Bono 6 Action Shoes um, and so we have the, the blue formal shoes which um, represent gifted programs which are most suitable to high achieving gifted students. Um, they're very formal, they're uh, very fast paced. Uh, strict guidelines for getting into them um, and then we have the, the grey sneakers which are all about investigation um, and so they're for programs which are to do with research etc. They're very suitable for Sprite. Um, the orange gum boots are emergency measures. Um, and that's, oh dear, this child's gifted, what will we do with them? Um, but some of the solutions they come up with with that could be very helpful, could be very good indeed. Um, but some of them may not be possible when you bring into account the, the learning difficulty as well. So poor old Sprite was given an orange gumboot and told to hop until they thought about what else they could do. Um, in this picture she's wearing a blue formal shoe for the um, formal gifted program. Okay, um, I'm very nearly finished. Um, and um, she's wearing a pink slipper for care and compassion on the other foot. In this picture she's wearing the brown brogues which is do the most sensible thing. Um, and that's that's the individual learning programs. That's if she's several years ahead in one subject and part of the course in another, that's what you do. If she's, um, you know, if she's a good candidate for being accelerated by one or more years across the board, that's what you do. Um, so I really like the brown sensible shoes. And in the final one, she's wearing one brown shoe which is 
um, that do what's most sensible and have a, an individual education program. Um, and on the other foot, she's wearing a plaster cast. That represents um, being eligible and fulfilling all the criteria in order to get funding for the ideal program that's going to suit her learning disability. And so that pretty much finishes what I'm going to tell you. Um, there are two pages here of references. And then um, any questions or comments, and here are the details of how to stay in touch. So do we have any, any questions or queries or comments? Thank you, Janita. Thank you, Joe. I think you've given us a lot of food for thought. I find oh. it rather intriguing that gifted students may have disabilities and that's something I think we all need to be mindful of in the classroom. Love all the resources you shared. So if people would like to save the chat, you can go to File, Save, Chat. I think Joe said we could also save her whiteboards. Yes. Let me go File. Dave Whiteboard if you would like to do that. Um, so thank you very much, Joe. I always enjoy listening to you. I love the way you illustrate and that you bring gifted students to life. Um, so thank you very, very much. Uh, we again just thank our sponsors and just to remind you, Ness Crouch will be presenting next on producing Australian text sorry, producing text for the Australian curriculum. And I just dropped the link in the chat. So thank you again, Joe, for a wonderful presentation. And we ask you all once you've saved to leave the room so that we can get the recording. Thanks, Joe. Yes, gifted week. Um, we must remember that coming up very, very soon.